Hi there. In this video I'm going to cover digitising a map in ArcGIS Desktop. Um, so there are a couple of reasons why you might want to digitise in ArcGIS Desktop rather than digitising in uh, graphics packages. Um, the main reason is that you are then creating data that will have a spatial component. So if somebody wants to open up in ArcGIS or another GIS they can do that and the data has attributes which can be very useful um, beyond just having a simple display of the data, a cleaned up display. Um, one of the other advantages is that uh, we can um, use, utilise different workflows in GIS for reducing the effort that goes into digitising some features uh, in particular in this video I will show an example of using um, having to only draw uh, the contacts and then generating the polygons from the areas uh, of this concept contacts. So the first thing you're going to want to do with your map um, I should say now that I've I've actually provided you with the, um, the data set to work on. So that data set has a map document, this is ArcMap 10.3 um, fortunately there's not very good backwards compatibility or forwards compatibility I should say from previous versions so I can supply extra versions if you need them. Uh, I've given you an example map portion um, and that's from an area in St. Bathans, New Zealand and Otago and a GIS database with a little bit of topo data and also a font for uh, plotting the um, structural data. Uh, actually plotting the structural data is covered in a different video. So I'll provide that data set. Um, there'll be a link in the, uh, within this video. So the first thing we want to do is evaluate the map that we've got and it really helps to think about how you're going to put this data into a GIS and this can be difficult if you haven't used GIS that much it can be difficult to think about the different ways that you can um, abstract the data so how you can transfer it into uh, a GIS and um, so I've just drawn up a little table so you can have a little think about that um, so looking at the map that we've got here uh, the topo data we don't really need to concern ourselves overly much with the attributes of that. Um, you can it's largely depend on, on what kind of topo data set you have, uh, but you know you have names of roads which you can use to display along the road name. You have uh, contour uh, contours will have the um, elevation of that contour line, and uh, there's various other attributes. A trip, uh, for each of the topo data sets. Um, main thing we're interested in here is the what we're going to take from what we've mapped in, in our geology. So for the geology uh, units, thinking about the kind of rules that we have for those, this can be useful if you're going to be using topology at some point later on, but it also just gets you thinking about how you can kind of create these. So we're going to have non-overlapping polygons um, and we also want to have no gaps so no gaps between the polygons, we don't want to have slivers um, if we're making a geological map we, we have mapped the geology in all the places um, if we wanted to have gaps in the map we would just have still have a polygon there but just have it unknown potentially that would be a way to get around with that if you didn't know what it was so the attributes um, if you've been doing the mapping yourself then you would have uh, potentially some more attributes to, to put in about each of the units um, but in this case I'm working with a student's map that I don't know that much about um, so all I've actually got is the unit code um, so in, in this example so the unit code um, that's this RK, MTO, SB and DN w which we'll probably refer to um, uh, formation names um, now for geological contacts we're going to have objects, they're going to be objects and they're going to be lines and 
they're going to have any lines that should um, that should should all meet up. Lines should not have gaps. So there shouldn't be any um, gaps between the lines. Where there is no line. So, for instance, this line should connect to this line along the boundary there. Um, you're probably also not you're not going to have overhangs, no overhangs. So that would be if this line went into here, you wouldn't want it going past this. Um, so that's one thing you can. Oops, got that wrong. No overhangs, and the attributes that we're going to have for this is the accuracy of the contact. So we've got some this contact here uh, is a solid line. Uh, actually this might just be the contour line that we're seeing over top um, but for this exercise I'm going to assume this is a solid line just because it can show you then how to um, kind of digitize it and work with it if you do have solid and dash lines um, so the dash being for approximate uh, the other thing we have is a um, we've got a fault in there and that is a line um, there's not really any constraints with the fault, but I would say there's a line with a direction. Let, let me discuss that a little bit soon. Um, so the fault will have a dip and a dip as a myth. Actually, the dip azimuth isn't relevant. It will just have a dip, but it might be different along parts of the fault. So, yeah, and we've also got an anticline. So that's some of the things that we've got on here. Now, in terms of the fault and anticline difference, the answer is actually that the fault has a direction. Um, so I just fill that in line. So the fault has a direction. So the ticks are on one side of the line. So it might be necessary um, when you're putting in the symbol for that line to actually um, put um, to flip the line so that the uh, in this case the squares are appearing on the correct side. Okay, so now that we've talked a little bit about this, let's go back to our map. So I've just got this in uh, data view. So it's going to be the most um, the easy thing to do with that. Um, so the first thing we want to do is set up our base map. Now for this example I've already sort of set up a base map. Um, so I've got some topo data on here. I just want some data so that I can do the georeferencing of our scanned field map. Um, so you're going to want to scan that field map. I'd recommend just scanning it as um, .tiff or .jpg format. And vector data works well because that's um, depending on the scale of the data, it allows for easier um, georeferencing. So getting straight on to georeferencing, so I've got this example map portion, I'm going to drag that into the map. Now the next thing I want to do is, it's got an unknown spatial reference, it's okay, once we georeference it, we will have a spatial reference. So we're going to open up the um, editing, the uh, sorry, the georeferencing toolbar. So we go to customize toolbars, uh, georeferencing and you can see by default that's just pulled in the only layer that we can georeference. Now we just want to, if you have a look at the example map portion in another software package you can see the extent of it and what you want to do is just match the extent roughly um, to this area and then we can go to georeferencing and then fit to display. So this is the first sort of order of georeferencing and that just puts it roughly in the right place. Now the key with the georeferencing is that we're going to push, push control points um, from, from the scan map to um, the actual position that should be. So nice points to choose are actually points that are unique points, so the crossing of two roads or potentially where a river crosses a contour line and um, now the, th the tricky thing is these maps get changed over time but if you so if you're looking at historical maps this can be quite difficult 
we have to um, um, kind of look around a bit harder. Um, but this one should be relatively easy, although I will point out one thing that has changed between these maps. So I'm going to this links um, add control points and I'm going to click on this point here and then I'm going to click on this point here. Now you can see that I've got kind of snapping happening. Um, sometimes with georeferencing you want to turn that off. At this stage it's actually fine that I've got this on. Um, and now I need to find another control point to use. So you'll notice that this control point wouldn't work very well because actually there is some definite difference between these two maps. Um, so I'm going to instead use a point up here which I think will be pretty good. If you look here, the point here, so I'm going to take this, maybe we do need to actually turn off snapping. Um, so go to customize, toolbars, and then snapping and just turn that off and that just means that we're not snapping to these contour lines that we're trying to geo-reference ge with. So I'm going to take that point down there and put it there. You can see that mostly this is alright now and you can see this difference between the roads so this road data set has changed between these two maps, between this map being um, kind of exported. So there's a little shift here between these these layers. Um, you can see a little bit of an offset, and I can kind of roughly estimate what that is. So I'm just going to put a little point here to just line those up, and that's all good. Now one thing you can do is if you're um, if you've got a map with coordinates on that, I would use those. Um, this one is just a portion so we don't actually see those coordinates. But say we knew that this intersection between, say there was a horizontal grid line here, and we knew the point of this intersection, we could click here uh, once and then right click and then input the XY. Um, I'll just cancel that point. Or alternatively, we could click on one, go to this links table, and just update the X, Y in here. So that's a couple of different ways you can get an accurate georeferencing. And you definitely would want to do that if you did have those coordinates, because they're always going to be kind of more accurate. Um, yeah. So when we finish this, it's important that we um, update the georeferencing to sort of lock those edits in. So I'm just going to go georeferencing and then update georeferencing. And what that will do will create the world file um, so that you can transfer it to different maps and it will have that georeferencing information in. I think it is also stored in the XML file, but um, it's a good idea to do this ge uh, update georeferencing. Um, and now we're kind of finished with georeferencing. You can just turn that off and we can actually turn off the topo layer because we don't need to have that on when we're just digitizing the geology. Um, so some tips for georeferencing. Um, I would put a few points in roughly first, get it in roughly the right place, and then look for more precise points once you can kind of see what features uh, correlate between your scan map and the, and the map in the GIS. Um, you can delete points that are an error or an issue, and you usually see a blue bar between them if they are out. Um, in the links table. So that's all I'm going to cover in this video. In the next video I will cover some, some of the following, um, some other steps in doing uh, digitising.